Hey there, fourth grade, this is Mr. Campbell. Today we are gonna be working on page 337. Uh, this is gonna be lesson 9.2, decompose fractions. And after today, we want you to be able to say, I can use number lines, area models, or drawings to decompose fractions. And we're gonna talk about this on the next page a little bit more, but decompose just means to take something and break it down into smaller parts. So let's take a look at our solve and share up here. It says Karen has 11 eighths pounds of chili to put into three bowls. The amount of chili in each bowl does not have to be the same. How much chili should Karen put into each bowl? All right, so here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to come down here and we're gonna start off by say, drawing uh, our 11 eighths. So this is how much chili we have, all right? And then down here, I'm going to have you draw three bowls, and they do not need to be fancy looking bowls. You can tell um, mine are just kind of half circles. That one's barely even a half circle. All right, we're going to draw three bowls, and I need to take this 11 eighths and break it apart into three different ones. Well, remember from our lesson yesterday, uh, 11 eighths is just 11 one eighths. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and write those out right now. And you can do this with me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right. So this eleven eighths I broke into eleven one eighths. All right. Now here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just draw lines two different bowls and you can do this however you'd like you can send as many as you want to whichever bowls you choose all right uh, i'm gonna do this this is just what i chose so i took my 11 eighths pounds of chili all right and i am gonna move them into these different ones so how many came into my first bowl well one eighth two eighths three eighths so in my bowl i'm gonna write three eighths all right. And now what about my middle bowl? I had one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths in my second bowl. And then I put one eighth in my third bowl. They told us at the start they did not have to be the same. But does three plus seven plus one equal 11? Well, three plus seven is 10 plus one more would be 11. So this is 11 eighths we put into these and then we move them into our bowls. This is how we can decompose the number 11 eighths, all right? We break it into smaller pieces and then we say, if we added these three numbers together, it would still go as that original one. Let's go ahead and turn to page 338 and check out our lesson for today. All right, so here we are on page 338, and it says, Charlene wants to leave one-sixth of her garden empty. What are some different ways that Charlene can plant the rest of her garden? So here we've got our garden right here. It's broken into one, two, three, four, five, six different parts. We've got one spot that's unplanted, so that's one out of six is empty, but then there are five out of six that are planted, all right? Check out over here, it says decompose means to break into parts. Compose means to combine parts. The fraction of the garden that Charlene will plant can be decomposed in more than one way. And just like on the first page, when I broke apart our 11 eighths into a variety, you might have had different things. And that's okay, because when we decompose, there's not always one right answer. There are different ways we can do it. So let's go back to Charlene for just a second. So she wants to know, well, what can she plant in these extra spaces, right? And so down here uh, for letter B, it says Charlene could plant four one six sections with blue flowers. So she's got four spots with blue flowers and then one six with red peppers. So five six is four six and one six together. So five six equals four six plus one six. We knew we had five, six openings, and so we made sure that the ones that we planted fit. Now, just a quick reminder, our numerator is on top, our denominator is on bottom. The denominator tells us how many it takes to make the whole thing, 
and our numerator tells us how many of those pieces we're using. All right, so one piece plus four pieces equals five pieces, and it still takes six to make our whole. All right, so let's look at another way. It says Charlene could also plant one one six section with green beans. One one six section with yellow squash, one one six section with red peppers, and two one six sections with blue flowers. It's a tongue twister here. All right, but what does that mean? Well, that means one six of green beans, one six of squash, one six of red peppers, and two six of blue flowers. One plus one plus one is three. Three plus two is five. So that's another way that we can do that. So decomposing means that we take a fraction and we just break it into smaller parts to add together, all right? This is the decomposing of 5 6. This is a decomposition of 5 6, all right? Let's turn to page 339 and check out uh, another example. So on page 339, they're giving us another example. And this time we're starting with three and one eighths, all right? This is called a mixed number because the big number here is the whole number and we also have a fraction. So a mixed number is exactly that. It's part whole number and part fraction. So three and one eighth. And so we could decompose that by saying it's one whole plus one whole plus one eighth, all right? And that's shown here. This is one whole thing because there's eight pieces with eight that are colored in. So that's one whole, one whole, one whole, and then we have one eighth. There's one piece that's one eighth. So one plus one plus one makes those three, plus one eighth makes one and one eighth. But we can also change these one whole into a fraction. Because one whole just means this whole thing has been shaded in. But how many pieces have been shaded in? Well, there's been eight pieces shaded in. And how many pieces does it take to make the whole? Well, it's eight. And I've mentioned that before, that when our numerator and denominator are the same, it equals one whole. So this is actually the same. One and then eight over eight are equal. So we said one plus one plus one plus one eighth is three and one eighth. But we also say, 8 over 8 plus 8 eighths plus 8 eighths plus 1 eighth is also equal to 3 and 1 eighth. All right. So when we use our mixed numbers, we can do those in a different way just by using the fraction for 1, or we can use that whole number, even if we see that mixed number. Well, let's go ahead and jump down here uh, to our do you know. All right. So for number three, zoom in a little bit more for us there. All right, for number three, it says to decompose each fraction or mixed number in two different ways. Two different ways. So we're going to take our fraction here, and I'm going to break it into something where I'm going to add just two fractions together to get that. And then over here, I'm going to add three fractions together to get that. So Let's go ahead and check that out. Well, what would that look like? Well, when we have a fraction and we're adding, the denominator will stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by at putting my denominators in. All right. And then I'm going to look at my numerator and say, well, what plus what will give me three? Well, how about one plus two? Would one fifth plus two fifths equal three fifths? Yes, it would. All right. What about our next one? Three fifths, but we've got to break it into three parts. Well, just like before, we're going to have fifths be our denominator. And then what plus what plus what would equal three? One plus one would be two plus one more is three. So one, one, and one. So one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, that is equal. So that's how we can decompose three-fifths. We can break it into three one-fifth parts. All right, let's look at number four. Number four is one and three-fourths. Well, I'm just going to break apart my whole number from my fraction, and that's a way to decompose it. So I'm going to take this fraction and just move it over here. So 
this would be 1 plus 3 fourths, right? Now, if I go back up here just real quick, you don't have to, you can just look up. When I had this, that was what I did here, right? 3, I had 3 whole ones plus the fraction. The other way that I could do it is those whole numbers, I could make the numerator and denominator the same because that makes it one whole. So I was talking about eighths up here. So eight over eight was one whole. So when I come back down here, I can go, okay, well, how could I make this one whole into a fraction? Well, our denominator is going to stay the same, right? So what would I need to put up here to make one whole? If it takes four parts to make a whole, I would need to put a four up here because four over four is equal to one whole. And then I can say, well, I still have this fraction, so I'm going to put that over here as three-fourths. Four over four is equal to one. Three-fourths is still right here, so this is equal. They're the same, okay? That's a way that we can solve these types of problems. All right, we're going to jump down here to number six and number eight. These are the two problems that I want you to try right now. And we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to look at this and say, all right, well, what are two ways that I could do that? All right. Now I'm going to help you out with the first one. And then I'm, I'm going to have you solve a second way uh, on your own. Okay. So let's go ahead and check out this first one. So uh, seven eighths. Well, I'm going to add two things together to get to seven eighths. My denominator will stay the same, right? And then I can ask myself, what plus what can equal seven? How about four plus three? That equals seven. I could do six plus one, right? But four eighths plus three eighths will give us those seven eighths. So now let me ask you over here. What if uh, I want to add three fractions together? Hmm, three fractions together to get to seven eighths. Go ahead and try that out right now. See if you can add three fractions together to get to seven eighths. Pause your video and try it out. I hope you pause your video. If not, do it right now, because we're gonna go over this. My denominator will stay the same on all of these. Eight, 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 because I, my denominator is the same when I add fractions. Now I just need to make sure whatever three numbers I put in my numerator, they are equal to seven. So I could do uh, two plus two plus three right? I could do one plus one plus five. I could do uh, three plus two plus two. I could do two plus three plus two. As long as my numerators all add up to seven, then you would have gotten this one right, all right? So this is just my example. Uh, you could do it as many different ways as you'd like to, okay? All right, well, let's check out number eight because number eight, a little bit different, right? For number eight, we've got a mixed number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose it by keeping my whole number. So I'm going to say one plus one is going to equal that two. And then I can just put my fraction at the end. One plus one is two plus one half is two and one half. What if I wanted to turn these into fractions, though? All right. So what if I wanted to turn these into fractions? What would be the fraction for one whole that I would put here? Well, our denominator is going to stay the same in all of these so that that way I can add them all together easily. So if my denominator is two, how many pieces would I need to make one whole? I hope you wrote in two already because two over two is equal to one. And if I need another one whole, I'm going to put two over two, okay? And then my other fraction, my one half can just stay right there. And two halves plus two halves plus one half is equal to two and one half. All right, fourth grade, that is all that we've got for today uh, when we are decomposing our numbers. Now remember, Whenever we're taking a mixed number with a whole number and breaking it into our fraction, the bottom and the top have to match the same to make it into a whole number. All right, so four-fourths is equal to one. 
two halves is equal to one. Three thirds is equal to one. All right, and then we can add that fraction on. When we just got a fraction, we can break it into a variety of different ways to be able to get uh, to that original fraction. We're just breaking it into smaller pieces. All right, well, thanks so much for working hard with me today. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. We will see you next time. Have a good one, fourth grade.